Thank you very much. And welcome to Healthy Hearts. And this evening we're going to be looking at Know Your Dietary Numbers. So Dr. Alice is going to very shortly tell us all about our dietary numbers. So without any further ado, I'm going to um, um, ask Alice to, to start. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. So today we'll be talking about Know Your Dietary Numbers. And uh, it's just about diet. You already know this thing. So it's like we're just uh, going through what you already know. So I'm here courtesy of Sahara Nutrition, working together with Dr. Araba to bring you the best. So it is a good day to be able to discuss and bring up some things that you have done because we're looking at your dietary numbers, like what have you been doing? You know, actually, if you uh, just like Karen said, if you're paying attention to what you're eating and you think about it, then you don't have to always be on a diet trying to lose weight. It's so easy to get your weight down. So um, let's start by defining nutrition, really, or diet. Diet is the sum of food consumed by a person. So anything to do with uh, dietetics is the study of how to eat and be able to enjoy the food, and it brings you um, nourishment. So there's diet and nutrition. While nutrition is a study of food and the nutrients we need to sustain life and reproduce. So like me, I've studied both nutrition and dietetics. Some people just study nutrition, dietitian without knowing nutrition, yeah. So what do I mean by um, dietary numbers? We're just looking at just diet. It's really how much you should eat and how much you should drink. That is what I mean by dietary numbers. But most of us already know. Before I even go to the first one, let me ask, how many fruits should we have in a day? Fruits, maybe mm. two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we carry on. Thank you, Karen, I heard your voice. So um, really one to two fruits a day is what is recommended. Athletes can have up to five fruits maximum because they are running and training every day, so they need the nutrients. You'll find that somebody who is um, um, a weight trainer, you know, a footballer, somebody who exercises and trains very hard regularly can eat more fruits. However, as we eat fruits, we have to be aware of the fructose. Fructose is actually now classified as the next tobacco. Because what people do, people take a lot of juice. You take like five fruits, you blend it, and you take it all in one glass. That's a lot of fructose. Fructose is fruit sugar. And so if you take a lot of fructose, it also increases your risk of getting diabetes. It increases what you call your insulin response index. So every time you take a lot of juice, like so many fruits in one sitting, your insulin response index increases. Like the body produces a lot of insulin and eventually it's gonna get tired and it will not have sufficient insulin to produce. So in, in lay terms. And of course, also when you take a lot of um, uh, fruit, then you also suffer from acidity. A lot of times people actually don't know that the fruit is causing acidity. If you're taking like so many fruits. I remember this once I had a client and, um, she was being treated for acidity. And of course, uh, she was very, very healthy eater. And so she was wondering why she was suffering from acidity. So she went to see the doctor and, you know, see it's a high level person, seeing the cardiologist and all the doctors, they check, they check, you know, sometimes if it's too much, it even mimics a heart attack. And so when she came to me, so the doctors referred her to me and after talking to her just a few minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes, creating a rapport, finding out her diet, I really knew what the, uh, the diet was, what the problem was. She was eating like a huge bowl of fruits for breakfast every day on an empty stomach. Every day. You see, you're talking about six, seven fruits because you want to be healthy a lot. It was an unbelievable amount. And so I just said that was the problem and she couldn't believe it. I said, just take one fruit. If you must take it in the morning or two fruits at most. And within a short time, she was fine. She could not believe how much money she had wasted seeing doctors and trying to suffer from acidity. I mean, suffering from acidity. She paid too much money for that. And then just one visit to the dietitian sorted it out. Then of course, also a lot of fruit juices, children can become really overweight very easily 
because what you do is you just give them juices and you're using a lot of fruits, giving juices. So children will have their own prescriptions, but today we are talking about adults. So really even a child can have up to one to two fruits. So that's recommended. So your number for fruits is one to two fruits. If you're between me and you, three or maximum. If you're an athlete, you can take more. Vegetables, up to five servings a day. You know what that means. A serving is equivalent to one cup of raw vegetables and a half a cup cooked vegetables. We use the normal baking cups. So vegetables, it's always good to eat them raw, the ones that can be eaten raw. Eat lightly cooked, the ones that are cooked. And of course, eat a variety. So up to five servings. So you can have three, four, five servings, yes. So you always hear of five, five servings a day. That is like three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit combined. But on its own, this is what it means. Then we have carbohydrate. Remember we spent one, you know, one, one Tuesday just speaking about carbohydrate and the numbers. So this is a classification of carbohydrates, meaning if you're taking uh, low carbohydrate, it means you're taking 20 to 50 grams. What does that actually mean? A slice of bread, a standard bread, is equivalent to 15 grams. So it means if you're having four slices of bread, that means you have already taken 60 grams of carbohydrates. So that will be equivalent to a low carbohydrate. If you take between 50 to 130, that's considered uh, low. Moderate is 130 to 230, high is 230. But some other, um, some other literature classifies it differently, where actually, uh, 80 to 130 is moderate. So you can imagine. So just let's just remind ourselves how much starch, your number, you need to know the number that you consume. So really, um, you know, half a cup of, half a cup of starch, half a cup, you know, the baking cup, half a cup would give you about 15 grams of starch in general. Like I'm just combining both whole and not, about 15 grams of starch. So meaning, if you have a uh, one cup of starch, you're taking about 30 grams of carbohydrates. So if you have like a cup of starch for breakfast, lunch, dinner, that means you're having about a hundred or let's say about 120 estimate, which is fine in a day, but not in one meal. So let's look at an example of this book that I recommended some time back that you can get yourself a copy. You can see that um, this is uh, about 345 grams of rice. And that would give you almost, um, that's 14 plus six. Yeah, 20 teaspoons of sugar equivalent. And just a small pop, a small, um, a small sample of maize meal, or what do you call it, tofu? Eh? pounded yam, about this much, 175 grams, which is what we'll have in a meal. Remember, this is um, which would, what you'll have in a meal is going to give you 10 teaspoons of sugar. So that's a lot. So carbohydrates, remember, is the biggest killer. It is worse than fat. And a lot of us uh, in, our, in, the, in the communities where we live, there's a lot of processed starch. So let us watch the portions. So remember, portions, portions, and portions. Then you have proteins. So proteins is really calculated according to your body weight. So if you the lowest amount of protein you can take is 0 0.5 grams per kg body weight and one gram per kg body, or one gram or two grams maximum. Sorry about the spelling error. So somebody who's taking two grams per kg body weight is somebody who needs a high protein diet, somebody who's sick, but usually between one to 1.5. So it means that if I'm 70 kilos, I need about 70 grams of protein you know, in a day. That's already on the higher side. So let's say I need 35 grams. So let's work with 35 grams. So even 70 is fine. Like a palm size, like 30 grams of meat. Let's say if you just have 30 grams of meat or let's say one egg is about seven grams of protein. So you never have to eat too much protein. So if you take 0 0.5 grams, that means I'm, I'm 70 kilos, that means 35. So one egg is seven grams. So I can eat an equivalent of five eggs. You can have an equivalent of five eggs. 
and that's like a palm size of of of, of your palm of meat is about um seven grams of protein as well. So you need like five equivalent. When we finish this PowerPoint presentation, I'll be able to show you some, some portions so that you can see. And fat, most of the time, it's very easy to calculate fat. You just need to know. It's not, well, it's difficult to calculate. I take my words back. You must add fat or oil in green vegetables because they need, they are fat soluble and they need fat. And animal proteins like your meat, your fish, they already have fat. So you don't need to add any oil. Just use the natural fat, add your spices. If you add, it must be very little. So you, you will know that you're eating too much fat if you always have to get a special soap to clean your pots and pans because your pots and pans are oily. Then you know you're using a lot of fat. If you're frying, deep frying in fat, remember the food will always absorb the fat. So then you're taking a lot of fat. Occasionally you can fry, there's no problem, but most of the time you want to just add a little fat and oil in your food. Other natural foods that give you fat is your nuts, avocados. These are natural fats. So when you take nuts and avocados, you're already getting a lot of fat. So another way of eating healthy fat, like instead of eating butter for your spread, you can just beat up avocado and use it as a spread for your bread. So then you're eating healthy fat. So avocado is actually a fat, it's not a fruit. Yeah, so that's what I have for fat. How about water? We know how much water we need to drink. Natural water, I remember I insist on having natural water, not something with lemon or pineapple or what, just take the natural water so the body uses it. We also, we also talked about hydration. So there's a lot more information on the, on the Facebook page. So you can go back and, and look for these videos. So about 1.5 1 to 2 liters per day. If you're athletes, you'll take more because if you're training regular, if you're training hard, it means every hour you need to take almost, uh, you need to take 500 ml of water if you're training. So every hour you need to take Every hour of training, you need to take 500 ml. That means at the end of the day, they'll be taking even four to five liters. And uh, if you sit in air conditioned room, you have lighting the whole day, um, then you, and you work long hours in the office, then your water intake should be up by about 500 ml. So you can end up taking up to 2.5 liters. So that means that a glass, depending on your glass, it can be eight glasses or 10 glasses. If your glass is 200 ml, divide that. That means you're having 10 glasses. If it's 250 ml, then you're having eight glasses. So when people say eight glasses of water, it means mostly they divide the glass by the number, of, the size of the glass by the number of the liters. Thank you. And so how about your total calorie intake? So calorie intake is also calculated per kg body weight. And so 25 uh, calories per kg body weight is for weight loss, 35, up to 35 is for maintenance, and up to 45 is um, weight, uh, weight gain. Somebody who's very thin will always tend to eat more food. If you're, if you're a smaller, if you need to maintain the weight, then your calories stay here. So it's just multiplying this by your weight, but then a dietitian will need to calculate this for you. Because once you calculate, let's take an easy number, 40 times 70. How much is that, Hiba? 40 times 70, 2,800. You see, so that means, so I can't take, take 2,800 calories. That's a lot because I don't need it, but, if, if, if you calculate your calorie according to your weight, so what you do is normally your fat, your fat, fat intake is supposed to be 20% of that calorie. And then there's the protein intake is about 25%. And then carbohydrate intake is, um, so maybe 20, 20, 40, carbohydrate intake is 60. So carbohydrate includes your, your fruits, your veg, we'll put even vegetables there, your starches, so maybe one day when we have one of those training sessions, we'll really tell you how to calculate. But that's just a simple way of doing it. And you can, you can do it. You can do it easily. So if you want to lose weight, you always tend, you need more. 
if you need to gain weight, and not everybody can gain weight, but you're assuming somebody was sick and they've lost a lot of weight, they can regain that weight back if they eat properly. So they will need to eat a lot of food to maintain it. So just in case you don't want to remember numbers, what else can you use? You know, So you can use this plate method. So half of your plate, and we are talking about a plate where you know, your, in, your thumb and the index finger, that's like about the diameter. That means if you're shorter, the diameter of the plate you're using will be smaller. If you're taller, the diameter is wider. So it means you take more food. So that just that. And then half of it should be your non-starchy vegetables. And the other quarter is your carbohydrates. And remember also your beans count as carbohydrates when you're trying to count carbs. And then your proteins, animal proteins, your fish, your egg, your meat, and all those things. And of course, not taking water. Other ways of, of knowing what to eat is just your fist. So your fist should always be the amount of starch you should have on your plate. And your palm is the amount of protein that you should have on your plate. You know, So it can be your palm is the protein, your um, what, the cupped hand is like a snack, like nuts, your your, this is a teaspoon, so you can use that for like oil. And a thumb is like dairy, like something like cheese. And double, your double hand is your vegetables. So remember, so in short, you need more vegetables. You need little starch. You need sufficient protein. Snacks should just be cupped. Uh, your, your finger should be just a teaspoon. And then your thumb is like your cheese, if you want to eat some cheese and salami and things like that. So in short. Yep. So Alice, when diet is you? wrong, medicine is of no use. And when diet is correct, medicine is of no need. So thank you. Bring on the questions and the discussions. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Thank you so Karen, much. Karen, I had a question. Yes. Um, just before you, you, you talked about the, when you were showing us how to use our hands, you know, the hand jacks, is that per meal? Or would you say that's for the day? Is that mm -hmm. per meal? So that, that is per meal. It's per meal, yes. It's per meal, but of course, when you when you know how to ca calculate, then you know this is a lot of starch, so that you can have. So you count this as your starch for the meal. So you can have your starch for breakfast and lunch, and then dinner you have a fruit to count for your carbohydrate, or you can divide it into two. Part of it will be starch, real starch, and part of it will be your fruit. You know, yeah. But it's per meal. Which, which comes back to the plate, because if two of your, a handful, two hands is your vegetables, that means it's like half of your plate, you know, yeah. I, I, I don't know if others have, okay. I have another question if people don't have a, Karen, do you have a question? No, I don't have a question. I just wanted to say thanks, um, Alice, and thanks Hibber for that really interesting, that really good question, because um, I actually was thinking, well, that doesn't seem like an awful lot. Um, and, and I think sometimes we, um, we get so used to large portions that mm. it's, you know, when we've got to reduce the portion, we feel that we'd be, we're sort of losing out. But what mm. I've found, and I'm speaking quite openly about my sort of weight loss journey, is that I'm starting to eat more vegetables because I'm replacing that starch um, with with the vegetables, which are actually quite filling. So, mm. I, I still have a comment on that. So you know, I don't feel like I've been denied anymore. <laughs> oh, I actually have one of our staples here. So this is banku, and this is like, you know. But when I weigh this, well, I weighed half. I showed you that today. Half of that was about close to 150 grams or 100. was about No, it was 130 grams, which falls in that um, medium carb range, you know. For and, the day. And you're having it in a meal. Okay. Yes, I'm having it in a meal. Exactly. It brings back my question <laughs> about, is this for a meal or for a day? Because yeah. if this is my fist and I'm having this for a meal, 
that kind of goes beyond or it's just about what I should be having for the day. You know, so yeah. I, I wanted you to comment on that, you know, so. What, Actually, it's yeah. for the day. When these things were developed, a lot was not known about carbohydrates and how dangerous it is to eat a lot. So that's for a meal, not for the day. It's actually for a meal. But you know, it will also work for athletes. When you exercise regularly, you can have your fist of your starch and it will not be a problem. The problem is a lot of us are sedentary. We don't exercise. We work long hours. We sit for long hours. And then you get hungry anyway and you go and eat your large portion of food. That's the problem. But you see, this is just when you give a public information, then you give it like that. But now when you sit down with a dietitian, then they can break it for you in terms of those numbers that we talked about earlier before we showed the signs. Yeah. If we have any, do we have any more questions? Okay, thank you again, Alice, and thanks, Hiba, for for you know the sort of the session, the sessions. But you want to say something? Yeah, you've written here. Some you've written here seven to eight inches, but it's not seven to eight inches. It depends on this length of your finger. <laughs> so they might go get a, a a very large plate, and theirs is just five inches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the talk about the stuff, you know, we, were talk, we were talking about numbers, and I said, I think I've got quite a large for numbers. Yeah, I've got, yeah, I've, yeah. Got long, I've got long, I've got long fingers and thumb. I think so. I think that's seven inches, probably only six, but because I want a bigger play, I'm saying it's seven. Just saying. <laughs> I think it would be good to measure and to find out who has what. You know, mm. yeah. Mm. But I think what's really important is that, that we really don't have any excuse when we say we haven't got scales. I mean, you gave us a scale in our, you know, a measurement tool in our hands, in our mm -hmm. hand, um, so that we, we can actually do the right, you know, have the right portions. So I'd encourage people not to find challenges for not completing things, you know, not knowing what our size of our meals, because as, as Hiba did, she brought that, you know, she brought the, is it pounded yam? It's mm. bunk. Banku. Banku. She brought the banku and she held it in her palm and we could see quite easily um, the size of that. So I think we can quite easily measure. One of the questions that I did say was, do we have a closed fist or an open fist? Because that makes a difference, doesn't it? You know, no, you yeah. If you have um, an open fist, that's for snacks, you know. Snacks. Yes. And then an open palm is for like a protein. You know, protein, yes. yeah, and then your finger is like a teaspoon. Your yeah. thumb is for things that you want to snack on, like cheese, you know, yeah. So thank you again.